All right, best of the year test kits. And you know what? As voted by you guys, there's one that rules them all. This is what you guys pick up in the masses more than all the rest. It's Salifert, mm -hmm. like by a super wide margin. But we're gonna dive in a little just deeper than just the Salifert test kits, take a look at other options, figure out what our favorites are for various reasons, and yeah. I don't think this is gonna be a big surprise because Salifert has been kind of like, it was the king of the mountain when I entered uh, the hobby. It is what you guys are doing 20 years later. <laughs> uh, and so uh, not a big surprise, but there's one thing you will learn is that there is a right tool for the right job. If there was one brand that everybody trusts the most, it seems to be Salifert, but hidden within there, each one of these brands does something uniquely well. All right, so before we get into that, there's one thing that makes all of these titration kits better and probably the best pickup you can pick up, and it's not even a test kit. What is it? No, it's the Smart Stir. This thing is fantastic. Basically, it's a magnetic stirrer that fits those small cuvettes from various test kits. Uh, Red Sea is a really good example. But basically what it does is it continuously stirs that for you. So you're not stuck there shaking a little titrator and trying to press the, the plunger on the syringe at the same time and you, you get too many drops and then uh, it's... This, this just makes the color change super fast. It makes your focusing on titrating the right amount uh, way easier and it's you're gonna do your tests like so much faster. So one of the things that you might see is like, oh, I'm swirling, swirling with my hand a little bit, but nothing's actually mixing it. I'm just kind of swirling it a little bit. Yeah. And the reason that these titration kits change the color when they're doing it is because it's a pH dye in there. When it hits a certain pH, it's indicated that it's a turned enough of this from base to acid or vice versa. Uh, and what we've done here is what you, oh, what you see often is that it changes color for a second and changes back. back yep. That's because localized, like kind of on the outside, it turned pink, but the inner, inside is still blue. And then when you mix it all together, the dye doesn't actually change because you haven't changed the whole pH yet. Okay. Well, in this case, what you're going to do is it's going to be using that little bead that's in the center there, uh, and it's going to be mixing it around uh, so that you can like drop your little drops in and you'll get thoroughly mixed in every single time. And the moment it changes color, you know that's the right move. So some of these have a little bit different directions than the others, but uh, if you're going to do titration-based test kits, the Smart Stir is one of the best accessories you could ever possibly get. All right, so in that spirit, we're gonna break this up a little bit. What is the number one magnesium test kit voted by you guys once you pick it up? Well, we kind of <laughs> alluded to this at the beginning, but it's Salifert by a pretty wide margin. You guys love these test kits. Uh, in fact, if you took all the other magnesiums and you stacked them all on top of each other, it's still like Salifert by two. Yeah. Uh, like two <laughs> X. Uh, and so it is a very, very, very popular option uh, out there and what you guys have voted to the top. All right, that said, best of the year as voted by Thomas and Ryan are what for magnesium? It's uh, the Aqua Forest uh, test kit for magnesium. We agreed on this, which is great. Uh, basically, it's a really solid test kit. The price point's fantastic as well. But the thing that really did it for me is that during our testing, no matter who performed this test, it was accurate. And mm -hmm. that just makes it a really solid option for anybody who wants to get a test kit, who wants to be able to just do it and know that they're gonna get a good result. If a test kit's not finicky, you know, depending on who you hand it to, everybody's getting the same result, that tells you this is an easy test to perform and something that you can actually rely on. So accurate's a finicky word, right? Accurate means that you know Precise. for sure. Yeah. I would call it consistent as part of the thing. So what we did is we would take, uh, you know, six different people, a couple of them that don't know much about this, a couple of them that have done this a lot, and somewhere in the middle, have them perform these tests and then see what the readings are. Have them perform them multiple times, see what the readings are. Are they getting consistent remote results with how they're performing and reading it? Are they getting consistent results with each other? Uh, and if all of those people are getting that, than the, like they did with the aqua forest option, all of a sudden that's the one that I wanna use because when we're comparing with each other and I'm comparing my own results, like I'm going to get consistency. Because I don't really care whether magnesium's off by 20 points or not. No, it's, right? it's irrelevant. And the other thing that this test kit does have is that little uh, vial of sample that you can actually test against to see if you're doing the test properly, which is also pretty key. 
Yeah, it, like there is a confirmation step. That's exactly. where you get to the uh, accuracy, accuracy component. So yeah, this is by far, uh, I would say if you're really into this and you really care, uh, this is going to be the option that both of us would use. All right, calcium test kits. Drum roll, there's one that you guys pick up more than anything else. Big surprise, it's Salifert. Yes, again, stack all the other calcium test kits on top of each other. Still not as many uh, Salifert test kits as you guys are picking up. So uh, this is definitely a fan favorite. All right, but what's best of the year? What Ryan and Thomas had picked, what is it? It's the uh, Red Sea Calcium test kit. Boom, right here. Uh, this guy is that same thing, man. We put it through the paces with all the users. Uh, we have combined our own experience using these things. And they're just easiest to use and perform exactly. and most consistent results. And the thing that I really like about uh, a lot of the Red Sea test kits is they have really nice components for performing the test. In this case, the uh, titrator, which allows you to do it one handed, is really nice. And those cuvettes from the Red Sea test kits are a perfect fit for that smart stir. So if you want to use a test kit where you know those cuvettes are going to be a perfect fit, it's an awesome, awesome option. For what it's worth though, you can actually, regardless of your test kit, if you picked up the salad for ones, you could get one of these uh, and you don't have to use their container for titration test kits. You could use this one as well. So uh, I just gotta pick up an extra one of these things. One of the things about consistency though, that I like, especially when you're applying it to different skill sets and how we share information with each other, is that consistency is partially the chemistry, but it's also the ease of the chemistry because these things say, you know, shake for one minute, swirl for one minute. And the reality is, uh, I don't know, it feels like kind of like a minute. It could have been 30 seconds. It could have been a minute and a half. And the reactions change, you know, yeah. if you do the, the thing differently. Uh, kind of level spoonful, kind of over, kind of under, like whatever. So the reality is, is if, regardless of skill set, we're all coming up with very similar numbers, the chemistry is forgiving giving a consistent result and doesn't require you to do it perfectly every time. All right, as voted by you guys, uh, the most popular alkalinity test kit, drum roll with surprise ending. So if we're talking actual test kits, it's gonna be Salifert yet again. It is just super popular. But if we're talking checkers, alkalinity checker by Hannah is beating it out just by a dramatic amount. Yeah, so same story here. If you took all the other calcium test kits, uh, Salifert actually is more than all those stacked on each other, uh, as voted by you guys. Uh, but if you include the checker now, which is like, you know, no more titration, you just, you know, put the sample in there, squirt some fluid in there, hit the button, and you're good to go. Uh, it's very simple. It takes less than a minute and takes all of the interpretation and the need for this and everything out of the way. Yeah. Okay, not surprising. Uh, if you look at it from a, a reagent standpoint and uh, the checker itself, which is, you know, basically these, you're buying the whole reagent kit every time, you know. If you look at that time, it's actually five times the Salifert, which makes it like exponentially more than everything else. It is the number one pick reefers have spoken. It is just the easiest way to test alkalinity. There's no color interpretation. There's no mathematics involved. It's just less than a minute, you have a readout, you know your DKH. And because it's the test you're going to do the most often, especially for dosing two part, you're just gonna to wanna to get it done fast and you're gonna want a simple number and you cannot beat the HANA checker for that. Procedurally, super easy. This is, again, like this is the most consistent amongst every skill level and even yourself every time you do it. Consistency, ease, time. Like I would say anybody that's really into reefing, within 12 months, almost always picks up a Hannah Checker alkalinity. And the story continues uh, <laughs> in a similar fashion, which is the number one as picked by you guys, phosphate uh, test kit is? It's gonna be Salifert, but with that uh, caveat that if we're talking checkers, Hannah smashes it again. Yep, the checkers. The reason for this, and uh, you guys can you know confirm or deny for yourself, I can't read that blue. It's, uh, it's a tough one. The, yeah. the differences between those blue shades are really difficult uh, for especially dudes because we just don't see blues very well. It's hard and it's not a, a number you want to get a guesstimation of. You just want to know the number. Otherwise, you wouldn't be testing for it. So getting a digital readout on one of those HANA checkers with a single reagent, super simple to do. Again, procedurally, very easy. It's the best. 
I find that look at that, that blue, it's like looking at sunlight, looking at whatever, looking through the side of yeah. it, looking at the black, and like all these different things. I can never get anything meaningful out of it. It's, I would just not test. Yeah. Uh, if I want to know my uh, phosphate level, and the reason I want to know my phosphate level, by the way, and one of the like most underutilized probably test kits out there, is this is telling me a uh, window into pollution. Yes. Right. So like, it's not so much that I need a, you know, like a perfect number, you know, most people are shooting for somewhere between 0 0.03 and 0.1 past, past that you're starting to inhibit uh, yeah. uh, calcification. You're probably growing algae and stuff in some cases too. Uh, maybe you got things that are eating it faster, but you got some issues are in there. So uh, I'm shooting for that, but it's not so much like, let's pretend you don't even buy into that and you just don't care what the number is. What you don't want is uh, infinitely rising. Like every single time I test this once a month, it's just getting higher and higher because that's going nowhere good. And what it is, is it's a, like a component of the breakdown of all the organics we're putting in food and additives and everything that are going in there. And so if that's going up, all the other pollutants that are in there are going up too. And so it's not just nitrogen and phosphorus like that food has vitamin and mineral premixes and stuff in it. And those things are going up with it if they're not used perfectly and they're not used in the exact same ratio. So the pollution level, this is why I would use the uh, Hannah Checker and I want a number and I want it stable and I want it to be something that I can read. Hannah Checker delivers on all of that. All right, no surprise then, uh, uh, our pick is what? The Hannah Phosphate Checker. Best of the year. Yep. 100%. It's been around for a while, more than a year. But still, uh, best of the year, this is what most people would use. All right, we broke the chain here. Finally, Salaford isn't the monstrous winner that it was. <laughs> so this time we've got Salaford, but we also have the NIOS test kit, and there's a really specific reason why, and that's because this test kit has one of the easiest to read colors. It's not pink, it's not blue, it's actually orange, and the window they give you between the increments means you can get a really accurate reading, and it's very simple to perform. It is just like a surprise from left field. When I first tried that test kit, I was blown away, and it became the only nitrate test kit that I would ever use, but, there's something else out there that has really taken the uh, reefing community by storm. Hannah Jagger. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, uh, there is a low range one. Uh, personally, there's too much rigmarole for that. And yeah. uh, for me, I used it, it no longer exists in my house. But the high range one, again, I'm not trying to peg a number here. I'm just trying to stop it from perpetually rising. Perpetually rising is bad. So test like once a month and all you want to know is whatever I'm doing, it's not going higher. That means if it's going higher, I need to reduce my water changes or increase the water changes. Uh, if it's going higher, I can, you know, get a, put a refugium on, fix my filtration, change out my socks more, feed a little bit less if it was the right thing to do for the animals, uh, up my water change schedule, any of these things. And if it's like going to zero, zero all the time, like, well, you know what? I can probably feed more and the fish will be happy too about that. Uh, but I can use that pulse on it, but only if it's easy to do. And one of the problems with a lot of the nitrate test kits is they take too damn long to do yep. and they're hard to read. You know, for me, the pink uh, of the Salifert one is kind of hard for me to read. The, the orange in this chemistry is totally different and it's really easy for me to read, even fairly low. Uh, and I will tell you though, I don't see it up here, but the nitrate from Red Sea is another good okay. one. Okay, it is a special one because if you really care about accuracy and getting it down as low as possible, in all of our experiments, as we tried to find the best one, it was the Red Sea. So if you really want to peg accuracy, now I'm looking for consistency and I'm just trying to not perpetually rising and in the ballpark, I'm a ballpark person with nitrate, I don't need to peg a number, but if you do care, and you do want to peg a really low number, Red Sea is it. In fact, I'll go all the way to the point that we tried all of Hawk's chemistry, you know, for that expensive, like, yeah. you know, multiple thousand dollar DR 3900. I mean, it has a very accurate piece of machinery. We tried all of their chemistry and ultimately after making uh, reagent samples, like we were able to use nitrate uh, and make, you know, uh, standards for this thing and then graph them out. And we found that actually training the 3900 through a custom mode using the Red Sea reagents produce better results in seawater than all of Ta Hawk's own chemistry. Wow. Yeah, so if they care, care about that, uh, Red Sea is probably your best bet. 
Uh, if you really want it easy to read, this is probably your best bet. If you want- uh, Quick and uh, simple. Yeah, quick and simple. And a checker. And a checker. All right, so Thomas, which one of all of these do would you use uh, in general? So I was an IOS guy for a really long time, but the second that high range HANA checker came out for nitrate, I was all over it. It's as simple as the phosphate checker or the alkalinity checker to use. It's quick, it's easy. I get a number, no interpretation, I'm game. Sometimes I'm a dinosaur and I just go with what I know. Uh, <laughs> and what I know is this thing uh, gives me what I need. Uh, and so I use the NIOS nitrate. The reality is, is I'm only testing this like 12 times a year. It's like a once a month type of thing. Uh, and uh, I just don't really need uh, the added expense of the accuracy. This test kit is going to last me until it expires, which uh, in this case looks like two years from now. I'll get the full use uh, out of this thing for a pretty low value. So for me, the uh, nitrate uh, from NIOS, actually what I would go to, sounds like blasphemy because I love those checkers. <laughs> that's just true. All right, that's best of test kits. If you want to know the best of two part, as well as a bunch of other things for the year, man, you're going to see that in the best of playlist right here. There is a better two part for your needs. You just need to know what your needs are.